Great. Okay. Good to go. Hey, everyone. Yep. Hey, everybody. Welcome to CKAMAs. Tonight's guest has made the transition from dropping out of college and working at a car dealership to realizing he had all the tools to crush it as a UX engineer. His journey, however, began when he decided exactly what his goal would be. With that self-awareness and a combination of self-discipline, hustle, and sheer determination, he went on to crush it at Kenzie's very first UX cohort and now works as a UX engineer for their studio. Please turn your cameras on, unmute yourselves, and help me in welcoming Blake Walker. Welcome, Blake. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate you guys having hey. me. It's pretty cool. Congratulations. <laughs> thank Thanks you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much for uh, coming on. I, I'd love to actually start off with, um, so in, in user experience, uh, design in general, constant iteration is really like uh, central and at the core of that design process. Can you talk a bit about why um, being experimental was a particularly important um, aspect in your own journey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you've gone through and read uh, the post that I made, you'll know that at one point I was a freelance graphic designer. And I did that for a very long time on my own, just little side gigs. It wasn't anything real impressive, but I was doing it. And when you do that for so long, you get locked into your vision. You get locked into what you want to do, what you think is right, what you've learned, you know. Then going into a program like Kinsey, where you're introduced to other people and they have different perspectives, you know, and they're trying to tackle the same problem a different way. That's when iteration becomes very important uh, because you're, you're looking at one problem from multiple angles, you know, different life experience, different education, and coming up with different ways to, to accomplish the same goal. Things that you never would have thought of on your own, you know, and then, as you get further in, it goes into like user testing and that's how you make your decisions. But iteration initially is very, very important in UX and design. And there, there was also something um, that you mentioned in our, in our talk the other day about um, the significance of learning how to learn. And I think that actually um, really does feed within like UX in general as well is because with that iteration process, you're always constantly learning. Like there's always just a new ways to, to kind of adopt and, or adapt and change. Do you mind just talking a little bit about the significance of, of learning how to learn? Sure. Uh, this is a very big thing for me. Uh, learning how to learn is probably the most important thing you can do for yourself. Uh, and the, the reason I say that is because not everybody learns the same way. And uh, a lot of people, uh, I'd say even, yeah, I, won't, I don't want to say vast majority, but a lot, a big percentage of people learn by reading. They learn by taking a test. They learn by memorizing vocabulary, you know, those types of things. That's never been my thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a guy where you show me how to do it once and I'll remember how to do it. <laughs> so being very like hands-on um, and just experimenting and, you know, figuring out what what caters to your own style? What makes it stick? You know, what, what can you do? Step out of the box, step out of what everybody else is telling you, you know, how to do something and figure out what works for you. And as soon as I was able to do that, everything changed. And um, especially after finding Kinsey, because that is literally the way that they teach you there. It is uh, all hands-on. It's like you're working in a real tech team at a real tech company. So, it was, it was the perfect fit for me because that's my learning style. So you really got to figure out what works for you. And how did you kind of figure out what worked for you in particular? Was it a process of just, you, you kind of knew it or, or like, how did that come about? I think it was, it's just been uh, the experience over the years. Um, I, I'm going back into my story. Maybe not all of you know it, but I, I did drop out of college in 2010. And one of the main reasons was I just, I just wasn't learning the way they were trying to teach me. And I, I wasn't passionate about the content either. And that's a big factor. You know, if you're not passionate about it and you don't care, you're never going to learn. So that plus just teaching myself as I went into my little graphic design, you know, uh, experiment, I'm going to call it my freelance experiment. Um, just, I had to teach myself how to do those things, uh, how to use Photoshop and Illustrator and all that. So, 
finding tools online or, or different ways to absorb that knowledge, you know, through videos or um, just finding somebody that can teach me one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that had I've done that before as well. So it's um, it's just experimenting. It's putting yourself out there and actually seeking out the all those alternative means. You know, a lot of people just don't even think there's uh, there's a different way. It's I got to read a book and that's how I'm going to learn it. But that's not necessarily true. Yeah, and and there's also a bit of talk around um, even when you put yourself out there. Sometimes you are really um, basically going into something that's uncomfortable out of out of your element and you're probably more than likely to fail. Do you mind uh, sharing some of the insights Grandpa Walker had for you um, yes. growing up and the importance of embracing failure? Yeah, absolutely. That uh, was really the main theme I wanted to bring tonight was that failure actually equals success. There's a big stigma around failure. You know, people think if I fail, I'm done. <laughs> and that's, that's just not the case. Um, in order to get where you're going, you're going to fail. That's just part of it. And uh, yeah, as you were saying, uh, what Grandpa Walker used to tell me, the one thing he ever told me, you know, is, it was real simple. It's like, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that thing? Well, I don't think I'm going to like it. How do you know if you never try it? And I'm sure you've all heard the same thing probably from your grandparents or parents, you know. And um, it's so simple, but it's so accurate. You know, if you, don't, if you don't put yourself out there and at least try, even knowing that you might fail, you're never going to go anywhere. So, you know, what, what's that ate away at me for a couple of years? <laughs> I was like, uh, it's time to really step it up and, you know, follow his advice. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And there's definitely a lot of um, little threads there that we can um, dive a little bit further into and tease out. Um, but I would love um, if anyone currently in the audience right now had any questions for Blake to go ahead and um, I guess you can raise your hand on the Zoom feature or just like unmute yourselves. Um, but we also had a handful of questions coming in from the thread. Um, and then there's also just a ton of other things that we can cover. But um, right now would be a really great time for anybody if they had any questions. So does anyone have any questions currently? Awesome. So, oh, look. Looks like Tina has a question. Sweet. Tina, go ahead. Hey, guys. Hey, and hello, Blake. Nice to meet you. Um, nice to meet you. I believe my coach, Quinton, who I just got assigned with, is um, a boot camp student with you guys there. So it was nice to hear a little um, insight about that. And I would say my biggest question, just kind of jumping into career karma and being um, I don't say overwhelmed, but gifted so many free gifts right off the bat of knowledge and experience with people such as yourself is besides the learning um, part is what differentiated picking Kenzie over Springboard or, you know, some of the other ones that get you matched with? For sure. That's a great question. Uh, so what led me to Kenzie, I actually wasn't searching for a boot camp at all. I was actually looking for a graphic design internship and Kinsey had opened six months, not even, not even six months before I found that listing. So they were the first one I found. Um, and honestly, I, I didn't consider any others once I went and met them. Um, it, uh, as far as how it compares to other boot camps, I'm not very knowledgeable on that topic. But I can say that Kinsey isn't, isn't technically a boot camp or referred to a boot camp referred to as a boot camp a lot, but we're not really because we're full time and we're going to teach you everything that you need to know to get started in the industry. It's not just this coding language, this coding language, you know, a little bit of this or web design. It's now you're going to be a UX engineer and you're going to be able to design and do front end or you're going to be a full stack software engineer. So I just thought the Kinsey approach was a lot, mm, a lot better suited to me. And I also liked that it was, it was full time. It was one year and it was just so um, invested. Uh, that, that just really appealed to me. And fortunately I had, uh, or have <laughs> a wife that was able to support us as I went through school. So that was an option for me. Um, Do you feel like um, your background having graphics design kind of gave you a step in? I have zero background, but I like psychology and mostly have a sales background. So I do like you know, helping give feedback on different beta testing for websites. So that's kind of how I was coming in thinking, you oh, know, this is how I could ride the coding wave, but have mm -hmm. zero of that type of background. So just wondering how it felt coming in. For sure. 
Um, the design aspect definitely helps in UX, um, but it's not everything. The, the thing about UX is that it, it covers so many different topics. You know, we have people that literally just test. We have people that literally just do UX writing, which is just writing user-friendly copy for websites, you know. Um, and then I'm a, I'm a UI designer, so I actually do the design parts of it, where I design the user interface, and, you know, the interactions, that kind of thing. So uh, for me, going into it and then specializing in UI definitely helped me out. But I did struggle a little bit with some things I wasn't familiar with. You know, the research part of it and the testing, um, how to have the perfect user interview where you don't mess up your own data, you know, by accidentally manipulating stuff, stuff like that. you can be a little challenging. Um, but I did feel like I had to step up in only that one aspect. Yes. <laughs> hey, cool. Thank you so much. Good questions. <laughs> yeah, great questions. And um, we also had a, a question that was submitted on the thread by um, Judith. I don't know if Judith is with, yeah, Judith is here. Um, Judith, do you, do you mind um, unmuting yourself potentially and asking Blake your, your question that um, was on the thread? Or I can also uh, uh, sleep. Um, hi, Blake. Hey, Judith. Uh, I didn't get to answer your question on the thread. <laughs> I didn't get to it. Okay. Um, I'm currently a student at Kenzie, uh, just uh, uh, past the one month uh, into coding. So my question was, uh, how, when you were in the boot camp, how did you deal with imposter syndrome and what did you do to just keep yourself positive and uh, uh, walk through the boot camp? For sure. That's a great question. Imposter syndrome is something that so many people deal with, um, especially in these boot camps. You know, we're, we're dealing with uh, stuff that's totally new for a lot of people, almost everyone. So, you know, that stems from kind of a, a feeling of like a lack of confidence in yourself. And in my experience, the best way to deal with it is to really just acknowledge those thoughts, address them head on, uh, put them in perspective for yourself. The feeling of, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing or somebody is gonna find out that I don't know what I'm doing is maybe more accurate um, to how I have felt in the past. But uh, the difference between someone who experiences imposter syndrome and someone that doesn't is solely in how they respond to challenges. So I would say it's something that's tough to deal with and it is kind of person to person. It can be anxiety driven. It can come from all these different places. So my answer may not be 100% accurate to you, but I would say learn to value constructive criticism um, and understand that if you don't really understand what you're doing, that you're slowing your team down by not asking for clarification or help. Um, so just just keep practicing is really what it, it boils down to. Practice, communicate, and address those, those thoughts head on with yourself and try and reframe it in a way where you realize that, you know, I really do, I'm learning this. The people around me are learning this and we're not going to know it out the gate. You're not going to be perfect and nobody is. Everybody fails on their journey, as I've been saying. You know, that's, it's just part of it. So I'd say just stay strong. <laughs> keep the positive mindset and lean on the people around you and it, it gets better. It definitely gets better. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, learning to ask uh, for help is something that I'm also working on. That's also very difficult and I understand. That was something I struggled with for a very long time. But uh, you do get yourself into trouble if you don't. So <laughs> take it from me. Thank ask you. all the questions. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you're already putting in those reps right now with, um, asking those questions. So um, you're definitely heading in the right direction. Um, Blake, uh, there was also a certain aspect about um, your, your story where um, basically it was like, you didn't really know that this whole like universe of like UX design kind of existed. But when it did, when you were kind of like aware of that, you were just like, I know exactly what it is that like my goal is. And then you went out and you crushed it. Can you um, kind of like walk people through that process and like why 
like self-awareness is super important, like having that goal and then like the follow through and like what that kind of looks like so that they can re replicate it themselves. Absolutely. And it's, um, I mean, that was just part of really my whole journey is, you know, I, I felt lost for a very long time. I, I had this like hodgepodge set of skills where I had done blue collar jobs. I could do manual labor, do basic, you know, like uh, organization logistics type stuff. I worked customer service and sales and hated it, but I worked it and I knew how to do it. So bringing, I got a little bit of that. I can talk to people. I can, you know, I can do uh, some manual labor. I could draw, I can illustrate. I'm like, how do I put all these things together? You know? And in addition to that, I've always just been fascinated by um, like mechanical engineering, you know, just being like obsessed with trains when I was a kid, just cause I like the way they work, you know, and just stuff like that. So I like to break things down figure out how they work. And a lot of times figure out how to make them better. So then all of a sudden I go to Kinsey. I don't even, I didn't even know what UX was when I walked in the door, I had an idea, but I didn't know. And by the end of that meeting and where they had explained it to me and I actually prototyped out, uh, and a user interface for my uh, trial, trial run, my admissions test, <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, I was like, this is it. This combines my artistic abilities, interacting with people, designing for people, improving things that already exist, but creating new things that are also way easier to use. But this is perfect. <laughs> so it was, it was just that aha moment. But if I hadn't by chance checked indeed for, you know for a different listing even and just come across it and shown up i never would have found out about it and i'd probably still be lost you know swimming around trying to figure out <laughs> what do i do with all these random skills but uh, once i got in and i had that goal to focus on that ux goal knowing where i needed to be to make that happen to make that my career that that changed everything I was able to focus all my skill sets into that to where they became like one skill set. They all wrapped together into a nice little package. And, you know, the closer I got to that goal, the better I felt, the more confident I felt. And it ended up, ended up all right. <laughs> yeah, I love um, a handful of things in, in what you just said. One, the first point, um, love that you mentioned mechanical engineering. That's actually my own background, fun fact. Um, yeah, so it's very definitely good. very, um, there's a lot of overlap within um, UX, like engineering, not even just um, within mechanical engineering with like the physical, but like with software engineering and, and, and all of those, it's, it really is problem solving and like deconstructing things, putting them back together in like more efficient and like better ways um, for mm -hmm. the overall experience of like people or, or the systems that you're kind of dealing with. Um, but there was an, another thing around your notion of you didn't know anything about um, UX design had it not been for this like indeed um, you know interaction where you finally like came to that realization um, mm -hmm. and that's something that um, is like a really like it, it's kind of like a subtle detail but it's also something that people can start to try to engineer within their own lives so uh, it's there's like this notion of engineering serendipity and serendipity basically means like something um, you know a coincidence, a, a lucky coincidence, right? Happy accident, so it, right? <laughs> yeah, happy accident, exactly. And so in this in this circumstance, right, like that was a really happy accident. Like it, it sent you down this path that, um, you know, you got more clarity on like the goal that you wanted to get after. And at, like at, at that point, it really was all just about like the execution. So um, for, for people um, that are especially like, iffy about how, like how they want to move forward or like what they're really interested in, even if they're going through uh, like a, a, a program like Kenzie, um, with the things that you're learning, you're like sure, like you're learning UX engineering or, or software engineering or data science or design or whatever it might be. Um, but the thing is like you, you still have a whole universe of like different ways to apply what you're learning. And what would be really awesome is if you could all, um, you know, come to those serendipitous like revelations where you're reading something online, you hear something, you talk to somebody in like this one conversation um, ultimately like brings this new topic into your world that kind of like changes the trajectory of your lives. And so that's something to keep in mind, like 
uh, everyone on this call is like you're walking forward, like go find things that like interest you or just like make your ears perk up, right? And and kind of like follow your your interests and, and dig a little deeper into those forays because like with all the things that you all are learning and are trying to do like within your own like journeys, that will just like 10x the results because just like what Blake did, like it made him so like much more clear and he like knew exactly like what he wanted to do that um, the rest was a wrap. Um, so yeah, absolutely love that. Um, it looks like, okay, no, I thought we had a question um, surfacing there. So yeah, there's um, there's definitely a lot of like different different points in, in kind of like that that progression of like how you you got to like where you are. I'm wondering like with the the actual like Kenzie program and stuff, like was there anything that, um, within Kenzie's program that ultimately just set you up for success beyond your uh, expectations or were there just certain things and certain aspects about the program that were just like super resonant with you? Yeah, that's a great question. Wow. Um, yes. I think one thing that surprised me um, towards the end of the program um, was the placement department. It was, um, they, they do a very, very good job. And it, you know, when you go into the program, they're like, well, towards the end, we'll do some career development. We'll try and get you, you know, hooked up with some companies, get some interviews, but it was way more in depth than that. It was, we're bringing companies to you. We're bringing the, the VPs, the, the C level people of these companies, and we're going to put you and three other people in a room with them. <laughs> and you're just going to have a conversation. And you know, that was, something that was like, whoa, okay. So now I'm just doing this all of a sudden. Um, but I got, I got a job offer that way. I, I got, um, I had four or five interviews with the place that I met through, through that program. So I, I never expected it to go to that degree and to actually, I didn't expect anything to come of it because I had been let down in the past, <laughs> you know, by people over promising, under delivering, but I have actually never experienced that at Kinsey. I have never felt like it's been under anything's been under delivered or over promised. So. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, for, for, I know we have a couple of people like on this chat that are actually in the Kenzie program themselves. What, what advice would you have for them for making the best out of that experience? Like how would you, you know, advise them to just like really, you know, go above and beyond. For sure. Hmm. It's a little, it's a little tough because when I went through the program, I was UX one, there was eight of us, you know, and now the cohorts are 30, 40. I mean, they're big there. We got a lot of people in cohorts now. Um, so maybe it's more important than ever, but get to know the people around you, get to know your classmates, get to know your facilitators, um, but especially the classmates and don't exclude the people on zoom. You know, you want to have, we're building, we always build our Kinsey family, the community, the little connections that help support each other, right? And, oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> connecting with you the know, community. Roll it, back. roll it back. Yeah, connecting roll with the community. Uh, okay, I got it again. So it's, it's really about relationships. It's about trust. It's, you're going to have a much easier time um, going through the program if you can trust the person next to you, if you can trust their feedback if they can trust your feedback. Um, if, you can, if you can really band together, work together, develop together and trust each other, you're, you're gonna succeed. You know, you, you just gotta, you, you go in as a group of random people and you're gonna come out of the program as a family. You really will. Because you're spending eight hours a day for a whole year with the same people. It's, you know, it's gonna happen. So get a jump on it, get those relationships going uh, with the people around you and yeah, that's, that's really about the biggest advice I can give you because it's a tough program, but with the right support, you'll be fine. Yeah. When you, when you kind of have those people to, to lean on and, and like, there's always going to be a, like, regardless of any like um, endeavor that you kind of go through, that takes a bit of effort and there is a little bit of friction involved. Uh, you'll always come into like, you're, you'll hit a brick wall and you'll look around and you'll be like, all right, well, what, like, how do I move forward? But when you have like 30 other people that are there to hold you down and like guide you and like help you out, that's always mm -hmm. really great. But you can't like, you don't want to ever be the person that um, 
reaches out only when they need help. You kind of want to, like Blake said, um, definitely like start planting those seeds and, and really just wanting the best for people and like what career crime was all about, right? Like if you help people and like people have helped you in the past, like there's, there's always that karma that get like goes around, like comes around and, and people are always more than willing to help. So really great advice there. Um, yeah, there's some um, solid comments here. Zach, appreciate all, all of the wonderful um, value adds that you have thrown on in there. Um, Blake, so I'm also interested in kind of hearing your take on some of the, the technical things that you learned within like Kenzie and how um, effective it was with, um, I guess, also your job search and like how you sold yourself and the types of things that you were ultimately able to do. Do you mind talking about some of the things that like you learned and, and, and I guess more emphasis on some of the things that you kind of like got, I guess, outweighed benefits on being able to talk about or use like in industry? Hmm. That's a good question. That's a good question. So the things that I learned in Kinsey, I'm struggling with how to answer this one. Give me just a second. Yeah, no worries. Um, I guess I guess I could probably like gear it a little bit more towards like what what certain things like within like the the technical side of just like learning like UX engineering and like um, all of the other wonderful like skill set or the skills that you learned were the most like prevalent when it came to interviewing or like just trying to land a job and when you were going through the job search like what was that like differentiating factor that was that made people like oh Blake is definitely the, like the guy that we want <laughs> well um I would say I'm, I'm gonna give it to Kinsey on this one because it's it's the combination of design and front-end engineering that's what people want they want the unicorn you know that get the guy that can do both and the fact that I could do it for the most part I'm not very good at react but we'll keep that between them I uh, was able to <laughs> score score some pretty decent interviews. Um, even we went out to Denver and I had one with an ad agency out there. Um, just a couple people around town, down south here in Indy. Uh, it was definitely the combination of the two things that had them interested in me. Uh, what I think got me further once I got there was more of the UX side, uh, more of the design. But I also should have prefaced this with I'm looking for design roles and you're not, that's not always the case, you know? So just um, everything I had brought with me, plus everything I learned at Kinsey gave me a good footing to actually apply for user interface, you know, engineering positions. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I couldn't have done it otherwise. <laughs> Hopefully that answers the question adequately enough. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it definitely does. Um, what about the the projects that you worked on? Like how how impactful were those within the job search? Like um, did it matter a lot or not not as much? Like wh were you really proud of some of them? Like do you mind talking oh, about yeah. the projects a bit? Definitely, definitely. Um, because your capstone, at least when I went through it, the capstone for UX design was design your own app, prototype the whole thing out, make it look extremely nice. Like it essentially needs to function even though you have no backend running for it. And uh, since we were such a small group, we got to do it individually. So I actually got to create my own app with my own vision and you know, present it to the whole team and the whole school, like half the school showed up to see. So that was really cool. Um, for the front end stuff, we actually built, uh, as a team, we built a um, React app for web that was like a drag and drop um, task management tool uh, for small agile tech teams. And it was very, that, that was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life, can I tell you? Because uh, just JavaScript and React just, just destroys me. So I lucky, I'm lucky I had a good team, but I also did learn it <laughs> enough to get the capstone done. Um, yeah, I, the caps, I was proud of both of those capstone projects just immensely. And I actually learned enough that I was able to code my own website. So if you guys went to my website, I think they sent the link out. Um, I built that whole thing from scratch on my own. So that was a pretty proud moment to I can actually advertise myself using the skills I learned. Yeah. Um, 
I, I always love seeing the like all of the the hard work that people like put into just acquiring the skill set, but actually like building things. It's not about reading and you know it's actually about like implementing what you're you're learning and the best way to to kind of like put the cherry on top is like the culmination of all of these things that you've learned and like look at what I've built and being able to point at something. Um, mm -hmm. Always love saying that. And so there's um so there's the the notion of like learning how to learn, and then there's also just does learning ever end? Like what what would you say about like the importance of like continuously learning? Um, and just how do people find like their, you know, way of learning? Like, I know that not everyone is like visual or like maybe they're more auditory. How would you advise mm -hmm. people if they're just like, you know, this thing just isn't working for me? Um, do you think that they're just kind of like a, a dead cause or, a, yeah, I think that's, I don't know if that's the right term, but <laughs> what would you advise in, in that sense? Hmm. Well, that goes back to the point about being experimental. You know, it's it's something um, something that may be helpful is is doing it deliberately, sitting down and saying, I want to learn this topic. I'm going to read something about it. I'm going to watch a video. I'm going to listen to a podcast and I'm going to see, you know, it can't obviously be the same information because it won't work, but <laughs> similar information. See which see which way you learn best. And then that's what you stick with. But as far as oh, I just turned my music on. Sorry. Um, as far as God, I keep getting distracted by things and it, it's throwing me off my track. Going back, no you're saying uh, the importance of continuing to learn. That's what it was. Learning never stops. It never stops, especially in a field like tech, because things are evolving constantly, constantly. It's, it's something where you can't really stop you have to keep learning. You have to in order to keep pace. Um, so it's just, just buckling down, trying to get into a rhythm where you're continuously teaching yourself something and, you, and sets aside time for it. That's something that's very important um, on staff at Kinsey is we have dedicated personal development time to make sure that we're all staying on top of, you know, the latest trends and best practices and, doing what works for us. So for me, that's a Udemy course because I, that's how I learned. So they, they do that for me. Um, some people, they, they're reading books, you know, um, but yeah, definitely never stop trying to learn and just seeking out the things that interest you. It didn't necessarily have to be about your job or your career. You know, it can be, it can be hobby. It can be anything. Just, just teach yourself something on a regular basis. It's really yeah, all I have to say about it. <laughs> yeah, no, that it's definitely um, fairly solid advice. Um, Alexis, did you want to ask a question? Yes. Um, so I've been exploring data science for a while and came across um, tonight's announcement for or the announcement for tonight's event and read your bio and was intrigued because of my background in video production and editing and having worked in a variety of roles with my years of experience. Um, and then when I came across UX UI, the only thing I assumed about it was, oh, you're just designing the front end, that landing page, what it looks like. I took a graphic design class and I didn't enjoy it. So <laughs> I <laughs> was hesitant. Me, right? Yeah, I was hesitant <laughs> to even consider UX UI, but um, could you speak more on the other roles within it? You had talked about not only design, but the copywriting and tech uh, testing. Could you talk about any other roles or those roles as well? Absolutely, yeah. Um, just have to try and remember them. Well, there's actually quite a few of them, but uh, we have. Uh, UX researcher is a big one um, because the user is who we're designing for. The user is our person. <laughs> so we have to know what they want. So UX research is big. Um, you know what? Instead of me just sitting here fumbling over my words, I'm going to find the list and then I can actually describe them all once I have the list. Yeah. And if you, um, if you want to share your screen, we can also kind of like reference the same list together. Um, or you can just like say them out loud as well. Good deal. Almost there. 
as a bad first Google search. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have UI designer, which is like what I do, actually design the front end. But then we actually have UI developers also who are going to build the front end once it's designed and also probably have some input on how it's designed. Um, information architects. This is one of my favorite things to do. People think I'm nuts because I love information architecture. It's literally just organizing information based on what needs to be seen first. Um, you know, categorizing different pieces of different pages of a site and you know, what needs to come where in order for us to accomplish our goal, but also the user to have a good experience. I like that kind of stuff, but again, people think I'm crazy. So uh, you just a regular UX designer role is going to kind of encompass all of it um, and everything that's not in the front end development side. They could still probably do that, but that's not going to be their focus. Uh, we have, uh, I guess UX developer is kind of the same thing as a UI developer, but maybe a little bit more heavy on the research and all that side of it. Um, and you can also go into project management, uh, which is actually something I do a little bit of now in my role at Kinsey. Because uh, I work for Studio, which is technically part of Kinsey Academy, but we're like the internal development studio. And we make all of the software we use across the company. So it's not an, uh, an academic role in any way. So at, at the moment, um, the person who was running product for us got promoted to VP. So now I'm just kind of stuck <laughs> running you know, product for Studio and making sure our scrum boards are good and I make sure everybody has everything they need in addition to what I do for the UX stuff. So that could very easily get wrapped into a UX role. And uh, the last one that may be more catered to your experience would be an interaction designer. And uh, that's, you know, figuring out macro and micro interactions on a, a website or app something that's going to draw the user's attention just right. You know, you have to know kind of how people focus and how they read a page. And I don't know, I feel like having experience with editing and stuff like that could help you out in that, in that area. And it's, it's a really fun thing to do too. So <laughs> I think that uh, knocks out the list right there. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, for sure. David. Uh, looks like you're up. Hi, uh, I'm actually a Kennedy Corner One software engineering student, and I want to. You mentioned that uh, the developer, you have the developer role, there was a lot of building of the front end, and I want to know how that would differ from what a SC, uh developer would be working on. So you're talking um, like a traditional software, software developer yeah. versus, okay. Um, it's, it's not really a one or the other type thing. And maybe you weren't phrasing it that way, but that's kind of how I understood it. Uh, like what the difference is. The difference in that situation is just that that UX developer can, can code front end and can work more closely with software engineers and kind of speak their language, but they can also come back to the other side and talk to the purely UX people. So those people are very valuable. And that's actually kind of goes back to what I was saying. People want the unicorn because they can design and they can code. So that's a, it's a very powerful position to be in, but it is not easy to get there. <laughs> did I answer your question? I hope I did. Um, kind of, I was just wondering like, do that how what one would be a, would a developer really be able to develop without SE if they were a unicorn as you put it? Not not necessarily. Um, they probably don't have any back end knowledge at all. I mean it's it's possible that they do, but it's not very common that you see somebody that has all three <laughs> that can design the front end and back end. That's, that's a rare character right there. But somebody that's probably making a lot of money too. So <laughs> I think um, SE people can build 
on their own and they can, there's a lot of frameworks out there and UI kits, they could put together a whole app. A UX engineer may not be able to do that. Just depends on the person. All right, thank you. For sure. All right, so um, Blake, there's also some questions that, that uh, were submitted through the thread that I thought a couple of them were really interesting. Do you mind talking about like some of maybe the biggest challenges that you encountered through your experience um, at Kenzie and how you dealt with it, but also how you would advise others to um, now that you've gone through it and in hindsight, maybe you might've done things differently, but yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I thought this was a good question. This was um, John, is it uh, Quira? John Quira, is that how you say that? He asked the question, uh, what was the biggest challenge you encountered and how did you resolve it? Well, I had two. Uh, the first was working on a team with other designers. Uh, this was the first time I had to actually come in and collaborate with people and not just hear them, but actually take their feedback and do something with it. And they had to do the same for me. And they probably didn't like it much either because it was all new to all of us. But coming from this, you know, years and years of doing freelance and just working on stuff on my own, I couldn't stand it. I, it, I did not like it. And that was, that was just completely on me. I was just being selfish, you know, and I, I didn't, um, I, I almost had the reverse of imposter syndrome. Not like, I know there's actually a name for that. I didn't have what that is. <laughs> but I, I was overconfident in my abilities, for sure. So just realizing that, and having to, you know, like humble myself and realize what my skill set really is, not what I think it is. And I, I just had to be more open and let my guard down. And that kind of brings back the point of building a relationship with your with your coworkers or your classmates. Um, it's, it's much easier to do once you get to know them. Um, but if I could go back and do it again, I probably would have dropped my guard down earlier than I did which probably was like the, after the first month or something um, and just been a little more collaborative out the gate. Um, it's a mistake that I won't make again though, because I know how much that it hurt me personally in my own growth. Um, so I won't do that again. Second thing, um, JavaScript and React. <laughs> man, man, oh man. It is, it is tough, okay? It, not for everybody, but for me, it is tough. It does not sink in. I. I learned it. I got through the course. I passed the curriculum. So I can do that much of it. Uh, but it is very, very difficult for me to learn it. So that was my other challenge. Um, in the end, I just leaned heavy on my classmates. You know, I, I didn't want to ask them 20 questions a class, but I did. And in the end, I ended up learning it. So you just got to get over that. You know, if, if you're more open about asking questions, they will be too and then you'll all be more collaborative. Yeah, that's that's incredible. I, I, there's also an, um, something about your story where you, there, there's undoubtedly a lot of people like um, have similar failures or, or just challenges that they have to overcome. And some of them fold, whereas others kind of keep on trudging along. Um, you mentioned that you're, the final cohort like that made it all the way through was literally eight people that mm -hmm. basically were like family. Um, do you mind sharing a little bit about like the progression of like having a lot more people to begin with and like slowly, gradually, like people are just falling off and what allowed folks to kind of stay that route versus the ones that didn't? Sure. That's, that's another good question. Uh, I think we actually started with 12 or 13. So it's not like we had a massive number and dropped off, but um, it was it was a combination of things. We had, um, I'll, I'll quote one of the people that was in my cohort. This person um, had failed to show up for a week and then just randomly came back the next week and sat down in their group and said, why don't you guys just do all the work? I'll just copy it. It's a group assignment. We'll all just get the grade, you know, just, just trying to push it off. Like no big deal. You do the work. 
I'm just here to, you know, get through this thing. That's not going to cut it. <laughs> That's not going to cut it. If you're at a boot camp or, you know, what Kinsey is an actual, I don't know. I don't know. What, what would we call it, Zach? Is there a name? It's not boot camp. <laughs> we, we like to call it a, uh, a alternative to a traditional technical education. So it's an in-between between a boot camp and a traditional four-year college. We need a Quite snappy mouthful. word for that. <laughs> what, yeah, we'll we'll come we'll come up with something for the next for the next session. We'll brand something for you guys. <laughs> there we go. That's a tongue twister. Uh, um, definitely. <laughs> yeah, but if you're going through um, a, a schooling situation like that, you have to want to be there. And a lot of people go in thinking, you know, I'm I'm going to take the ISA. I don't have to pay up front, so it's kind of free. You know, I'm just, I'll go through, I'll get through it, and then they'll find me a job at the end. It, it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't. If you don't put in the work, you get exactly out of the school what you put in. So if you're just there to be there, you're not going to get anything out of it, and you're not going to get a job. It's just that simple. You got you to gotta stay the course. You got to want to be there, and you got to you gotta want – that certificate you really got to want it because <laughs> it's it's difficult if if you don't if you're not passionate if you don't care yeah I, to I totally get that and there's there's something about that notion of like you you get exactly how much you put in um and there's a there's a notion that a lot of people kind of and like i've definitely have been um a victim of this myself or not, not a victim but like I've done this myself is um, what is like the bare minimum you can get by with? And that is just the exact wrong question or the wrong perspective to have where, whereas you should actually be shifting towards like, what's the, the most that you can bear. Um, and mm -hmm. when you're kind of constantly like pushing yourself and like stretching yourself and like um, pushing further, like if you accomplish something in like half the time, like how can you do it in a fourth of the time? Right. Or like, always constantly like just growing um, exponentially like as an individual. And I think that by surrounding yourself with people and like having that family that's like walking through that and they all kind of have similar intentions, similar aspirations, they're all there for the right reasons. And they all want to like interact with one, each, one another to support one another because of this shared, you know, experience. Um, do you still, um, you know, con or are you still in contact with, some of your cohort mates like what how does that turn out oh yeah for sure we um we have a marco polo group we meet every other friday on zoom for an hour and have some beers and just hang out um we have a group text we have slack channels for the few of us that work at kinsey um it's yes we keep in contact <laughs> they're actually some of my very closest friends and i doubt that that'll change we've just been through not just the amount of time that we were together but how difficult that was you know it's it's the combination of everything together it was it was a struggle but we made it through only together so that's that's a pretty unba unbreakable bond <clears throat> i don't see it going away anytime soon yeah i think that shared experiences and i think even more so like shared struggles right like if you can relate to someone not just of like a yeah like i've had something similar to that like no like exactly like what you went through is exactly what I went through and there's like a, a certain level of um like bonding that you can't find anywhere else so that's really mm -hmm. awesome to to hear that you're still um in contact with all of them and, and like still alive and well those relationships um sure. relationships are super important does anyone else have a, a question it's uh, we're gonna be getting here um near the end and I want to make sure that anyone that's on the in the audience right now gets it gets to answer Blake or gets to uh, ask Blake whatever questions that they have. So no questions, anyone? Going once, going twice. Ah, David, there we go. There's another question. Go for it. Okay, I'm gonna call this the shock question because shock is very big on paying it forward. So how are you paying your education forward now that you've completed the program? Great question. Well, number one, I'm on an ISA. So <laughs> I'm actually paying back. 
but number two, I actually uh, mentor somebody in UX. Um, somebody that has been a student in UX before and is no longer. <laughs> um, I'm mentoring them and kind of helping them get um, more comfortable with, I guess getting over imposter syndrome is a big part of it. Is, uh, you know, you're, you're through the program, you have this paper, but maybe you're not getting uh, job interviews, you're not getting much interest. It's, I'm, I'm helping him build out his website and um, just really focus in on the things he needs to be focusing in on for UX uh, to get him to the next step because he's right there. He just needs to push. <laughs> and I, I hope to continue doing that. Um, but also by doing things like this, like the AMA, this has been great. This is fun. Um, I like just getting to share my experience with people and just doing panels and stuff at Kinsey as well if it comes up. Um, I try and do what I can. Hopefully it's enough. <laughs> Any little bit, any little bit, right? I mean, you're already sharing so much wisdom and, and like incredible insights. It's awesome to, to kind of be able to hear the progression of your own journey and being able to like pay it forward yourself and with things that you're even doing, like it came full circle and now you're working at Kenzie, like um, you still have all of the wonderful connections and friends that you made. And even with like the staff and like the community that like supports the you know, the operations on that end, like you're getting closer to them, since, like you're working with them directly. Like, it's really like a, a, a an awesome thing, especially with um, just the, the level of, or the, the mission and the vision and the values that, that all the folks at Kenzie kind of share. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's incredible. Um, I guess, was there any last bits before we kind of close off and like ask my final questions and stuff that you actually would, um, love to to share and, and kind of instill with, into everybody before we close out tonight oh man well we've covered everything that i set out to cover so now that i don't have anything i feel bad <laughs> i feel like i should have had that last thing you know the hammer at home but no um, no worries I, I could recap be experimental keep learning lean on the people around you you can do it quit telling yourself you can't because you can just, uh, just do it. Just do what's the, just do it. You know, Shia LaBeouf. The Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, do Alexis it. is cracking up right now. I love it. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, yeah, before I ask my last question and close out, where can people find you? Where can they find me? They can find me at blakewdesigns.com. It's my website. Um, also, I'm on YouTube. I make Call of Duty montages if anybody cares about it. <laughs> uh, but I'm also, I mean, I guess that's the best way to get in touch with me. If you have any other questions, anything like that, definitely hit up the website, go to the about page. You can email me directly. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to answer any additional questions you might think of later. So just let me know. All right. Um, so Blake, with this last question, it's geared so that everyone on this call doesn't just listen to the words that you say, but they actually implement them into their own lives. And it's not just going in one ear, not the other, but they make, you know, a, a gradual progression towards their goal. What would you advise people? What is the one thing you think that people can do this week that'll help them move towards their goal of breaking into tech? Number one, stop procrastinating. We're all stuck at home just do it. <laughs> you know, um, that, that is a big thing. Uh, just procrastination is something I struggle with. Try and uh, get over that. Find, find a video, find the way that you learn. That's what I'm going to tell you. If you don't know right now, the way that you learn, get out there and try and find it, figure out the way. Uh, because as soon as you, as soon as you learn that, you'll be good for life. Just keep teaching yourself. Just keep learning. I good? <laughs> Sorry, I think my, my headset kind of disconnected there. But no, that, that was it, for sure. That's something that that's like a, a, a first step um, that many people kind of oversee and they don't have that level of self-awareness that, that will really honestly like ten, tenfold their efforts. Um, mm -hmm. Because once you start like realizing and you have that level of self-awareness, everything kind of like clicks into place. Like you, you can identify the 
opportunities um, at your disposal that'll just like move you, um, you know, ever more so like closer towards towards your goals. Um, yeah, that. So I think that's probably all that we have going on for tonight. I think Jalen has his hand raised. I don't know if I want to call on him, but Jalen's always always been super, um, you know, high value. So Jalen, take it away, man. Go for okay. it. So just a quick question. Uh, not sure if I can word it right, but so uh, the ISA it seems like a a dream ordeal. Like when you're getting to McKenzie, when you're five, when you're you know while you're going through McKenzie, it's even an awesome ordeal. But now that you've graduated, is it still like everything is cracked up to be? Like, is it easy to to um, set up with a uh, I can't remember the name of the payment company, BMO or whatever it is. But is it easy to uh, set up payments with them? And is it, is it all like what it's cracked up to be? Does that, does that make sense? That's a really good question. I was wondering if somebody would ask me an ISA question. Um, even though I, I see Zach over there, he's probably like ready to, to pounce on that one. But um, the ISA has been great. I could not have attended Kinsey without it. Um, so I was grateful that they offered it in the first place. It is um, very easy to set up your payments when you're done you literally just scan your first pay stub and then they set up everything for you. Of course you need to double check it, but they pretty much always get it right. <laughs> they know what you owe them. So, um, and it, it's been fine. I, it's a lot of money every month, you know, not, not a ton. It's not like debilitating, but it's more than what you pay for a student loan, but it's only for a very small portion of the time that you'd be paying on a regular student loan. So, that that's my take on the ISA. I I like it as an option. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. And it continues um, funding Kinsey also. That's a big part of it too. <laughs> Keeps the money rolling. All right. It, uh, I'm glad we actually got to at least touch upon that. I knew that that was definitely a question that we would love to to cover. Um, I guess that concludes tonight's event. Blake. Really appreciate you coming on, man. Um, there was a lot Absolutely. of awesome insights and, and tips that I hope all of these people on this call will take action. Remember that that is like my thing, take action. Um, do everything that Blake has just mentioned and more. Come back and watch this recording and ingrain it into your head. Make sure that you're doing the things necessary to move you towards your goals. Um, and for everyone here that's been able to join us tonight. This was another hour of your time that you've invested towards your future. You have no idea whether or not there's one thing that our guests say that just hits that spark, you know, like the Indeed application, so to speak. This is engineering serendipity at its finest. Um, please continue joining us, interact on discussions, find Blake, find Zach, just say hello, make your connections, um, do all of the above. And until next time, everyone, uh, good night. And thanks again, Blake. Absolutely. And Zach. Thanks for having Appreciate me. You guys. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank thanks you. for the questions. All right. Good night, everyone.